Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the brand new Mate 30 and Mate 30 Pro. I had the opportunity to check out their launch event here in Munich, Germany, and I'm finally back at the hotel. So I wanna give you guys a basically an event recap, talk about the two devices that I just mentioned, the Huawei Watch GT2, the Mate 30 RS, Porsche design. We did cover the fact that, or at least we posted about the fact that obviously that they don't have Google Play services on these devices. And I'm talking about the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro specifically. Uh, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about what are the options that you have to basically get these things in installed but not only that there is a slight possibility and a slight possibility that we may be able to unlock the bootloader again this is tk let's check it out so the main thing we have here is that all three devices the mate 30 the mate 30 pro and the mate 30 porsche design will all be running android 10.0 so we're still running android not harmony os we're also going to be running EMUI 10.0 full version of that software on top of that as a skin. So no different than any other device that we've had from them before. It's generally an Android version. On top of it, there's a skin, which is EMUI. Now, the one thing that is not included in all three of these devices is obviously the Google Play services. So the Play Store, the Chrome, uh, YouTube, Gmail, all of the things that we normally associate with Google type of services will not be included. But that also means is that we're going to have to basically find different ways to get these services installed. And I'll explain to you a little bit more about that. Uh, the other thing they also talked about is the possibility of going back to unlocking the bootloader and that's also very exciting and I'll, again i'll come back to both of those things a little bit later in the video but i want to share with you guys mostly the main benefits first and let's start off with some of the main specifications for the mate 30 pro the mate 30 pro has a 6.53 inch display and a battery at 4500 milliamp that's a little bit bigger than what we had last year we still have the 40 watt charger and now we have a upgraded 27 watt wireless charger that is supported on the back we now have as well a brand new Horizon display. And this is a display that basically goes down to an 88 degree angle on the side of the device, uh, basically at the edge with an 18.4 by nine aspect ratio that also supports HDR. This device and this display looks amazing. Now, because of that, we now have some side functionalities. We, know, we don't actually have volume buttons on this device, but we also have the ability of using touch sensitivity on both the right and the left side of the device to be able to initiate the volume rocker up and down because the display goes all the way and basically goes over to the edge. One of the other things they also included in here is the ability of actually having air trigger, or game to, gaming triggers that will work on the top right and the top left edge of the display for especially playing like games for like PUBG, anything that requires input. And you can customize them to basically to play the game the way you'd like it. The seven nanometer Kirin 990 with 5G support will be powering both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro. Now, as far as camera setup, obviously we want to talk about this. We have a lot of cameras on both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro, but let's focus a little bit about the Mate 30 Pro. We're going to start off with the 40 megapixel pixel main shooter at f1.6 with ois we have a secondary 40 megapixel camera that's the ultra wide at f1.8 that's absolutely massive an 8 megapixel telephoto lens here at f2.4 as well as a depth sensor a 3d depth sensor on the back um, as far as the front facing camera setup we actually have multiple cameras as well as sensors here uh, first and foremost is a 32 megapixel f2.0 uh, front facing camera we also have a light sensor we do also have a depth sensor there for both of that bokeh effect that we talked about as well as a gesture sensor so now we actually have support for gestures on this device the mate 30 pro definitely has all of the bells and whistles and it actually now makes the notch on the front part of the display even more functional and necessary this is where i like i like to have a notch when it's functioning the one thing that we are lacking here on both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro is an earpiece at the top as we're using the in, uh, beneath the display vibration or sound system the way we saw it on the P30 Pro. So unfortunately, no more stereo speakers here. One of the other things they talked about that was really a surprise to me was the fact that the Mate 30 Pro or the Mate 30 line of devices will support M-Pen support. That's something that is very new. We've always seen it before, let's say on the um, Mate 20X, and that was the only device that supported it. The Mate 20 Pro and the Mate 20 didn't really even have any support for M-Pen. But right now, we now have that and it is going to be obviously an extra accessory you can pick up, but definitely appreciated on pro level devices like these. One of the more unique features that they talked about during the event was the fact that they actually have compatibility or integrated compatibility with the DJI Osmo 3 gimbal. That if you've ever used a stabilizer for any smartphone before, they make some of the best ones on the market. But now we have integrated support for it within the native camera application, which means whenever you're using an Osmo 3 with your device, you don't actually have to switch camera application. All of the features, uh, all the functions that we have within the camera, the 4K 64, frames per second, the super slow-mo, all the things that we have here, the night mode and all the upgraded features will work directly with the Osmo 3, which is really functional and very nice because generally you always have to use somebody else's app and it never has all the features that you want. 
Now, when it comes to the Mate 30, we do have a few different options there. Uh, first and foremost is the display is a 6.62 inch display with a battery capacity of 4200 milliamp battery. So even though we have a slightly bigger display than the Mate 30 Pro, we have a slightly smaller battery, but it still supports the 40 watt charger and the 27 watt wireless charger. We have a full view display here that it basically goes to 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio, as well as having HDR support similar to the way we have it on the Mate 30 Pro. Now, the Kirin 990 with the 7 nanometer chipset with the 5G support is also present here. This is something that they share across devices, but where it does change a little bit is when it comes to the cameras. On the back, we have a 40 megapixel. That's the main shooter at f1.8 with OIS, a little bit uh, lower as far as the aperture here. We're going to f1.8 as opposed to f1.6. We also have a 16 megapixel ultra wide uh, lens as opposed to the 40 that we have on the Mate 30 Pro. And this one's f2.2 an eight megapixel telephoto lens and a laser autofocusing sensor on the back as opposed to a 3D depth sensor. As far as the front facing camera, we pretty much have here basically a smaller notch, which also obviously becomes functional. And what we have here is a 32 megapixel camera, similar to the one we saw on the Mate 30 Pro. But here we only have a light sensor that accompanies that, no 3D sensor and no gesture sensor. So there's no gesture support on the brand new Mate 30. So the cool thing is that both of these devices will be available in 4G and 5G models. And the good thing is that basically the Mate 30 will start around 799 euros. And then the Mate 30 Pro will start at 1099 euros. So those are the price pricing that we saw but no real mention of as far as markets and where it's going to be released. And the main thing about the Mate 30 uh, RS or the Porsche design model is that basically it takes all of the benefits that we saw with the Mate 30 Pro and it actually goes even higher with 12 gigs of RAM and basically 512 gigs of internal storage. Uh, the main benefit here is of course the design, the aesthetics of the design, as well as the theme that's pre-built and installed on here. Uh, some of the main things that you'll see here obviously is the gesture control, the functionalities that we saw with the Mate 30 Pro with that display that basically just falls off the edge and that's really the horizon display that they were talking about. It's very nice and all the functionalities are there and I really appreciate the design. Starting price on that though unfortunately is going to be somewhere around the 2100 euros. So uh, again Porsche designs have never been cheap but they're always basically appealing to a specific niche market. Now the last couple of things that they also covered today was obviously a revamped version of the Huawei Watch GT. Now last year we covered that one and it definitely looks very nice and now they have the Huawei Watch GT2 still supporting up to two weeks worth of uh, basically battery life but it now adds the ability of actually having a speaker and a microphone as well as the fact that you can actually store music on it. So that's some of the new things that we have in here. Now powering this will be the Kirin A1 chipset, which is very powerful for what it needs. Uh, but again, it's still running a proprietary software as far as the operating system. It is not Wear OS, but it should basically work with any Android device as far as basically just installing their uh, with the Huawei health application and connecting it there and you should be able to use it. Uh, a lot of sporting activities and a lot of functionalities added in there as well on top of what we had before. Now the last thing that they also showed today was the Huawei Vision TV. Now this is a 4K 120 hertz quantum dot display that has Harmony OS running as the operating system. It has a built-in camera for video calls, integrated Huawei smart uh, assistant for automation around the home as well as our, with integration with your phone. And then of course the ability of mirroring your phone using the remote directly onto that display and getting a whole bunch of functionalities. Very similar to the ones we saw with the Honor Vision display but definitely taken up a notch as this device or this display starts off at 55 inch and it gets even bigger depending on the model you'd like to pick up. But what we saw today was essentially the latest and greatest and the best tech that Huawei has to offer to date. Um, when it came to the phones, when it came to the watch, when it also came to their brand new TV. Uh, the ecosystem that we're talking about right now here essentially is not including Google Play services for the phones. And what does that mean to use it is if you decide to pick it up and you want to get this device, you're going to have to basically go out and install or sideload uh, these applications, the Play Store, uh, you know, Gmail, uh, YouTube, all of the applications that you normally want to use. Uh, you'll need to basically sideload them. But this actually also applies if let's say you want to install Facebook, WhatsApp or Instagram. These applications have to be sideloaded because they are not going to be present on the apps, well, the app gallery, the existing Huawei and Honor app, uh, app store that's built into these devices. So just keep in mind, it's a little bit of a murky story, but it's not the end all be all kind of a situation. You can basically install them. You just need to do it yourself. It does, they don't come pre-installed. That's pretty much what it sounds like. Uh, and it could be fixed with an easy OTA. Once the certification is fixed, they can push it out. And then within overnight, you go wake up the next morning and everything is fixed. So the moment the situation is fixed, they should be able to get everything running. Um, when it also came to basically when they talked about the bootloader unlocking, that's something that's very exciting. That's something that they used to do and they stopped doing it about a year or so ago. So if that actually does come through, we'll also be able to see some development options, uh, secondary uh, operating system, or even more functionalities added to these devices because of the development community, because of the fact that they're saying that the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro could have unlockable bootloaders. So 
more to come on that story once they give us a little bit more other than you know they basically teased us today and said they're thinking about bringing it back let me know what you guys think in the description below as usual thank you very much for the support like and subscribe and share this video with all your friends and i'll see you guys in the next video